Hello, my name is Dr. Charlie Proctor. I'm with Beltline Bariatric here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the basics of suturing with the Art Essential uh, needle drivers. These are, as you probably know, needle drivers that have a wristed end to them, uh, very much like most surgical platforms that you'll be looking at. And you know, at the end of the day, the reason why we begin using these instruments and why the, uh, you know, they're, they're intriguing to all of us as surgeons is the ability to add that extra dimension to, the, to our intracorporeal sewing. Uh, most of us have gotten very facile, especially to do a lot of intracorporeal sewing with the straight stick instruments. And if you've had any uh, time to work on most of the robotic platforms, you'll see that the advantage those seem to offer are the extra little angles that you can get that are not feasible with most, most straight sticks. What I found, and the reason why I switched to using the Art Essential on most of my laparoscopic cases is I'm able to add in that extra bit of dexterity with these cases that I wasn't able to use before with straight laparoscopic sticks. So what we're going to talk about today a little bit are some of the, the tips and tricks to kind of get you going along a little bit quicker as you're learning how to do this for the first time. I'll show you some of the, maybe get over some of the speed bumps that slowed me down at the very beginning to maybe get you off the road and ready to do your first few cases with the Art Essential needle driver. So the first thing I want to start talking about is really just how to get started as you're moving into suturing on the simulator. Okay, so just getting those instruments in and out and uh, figuring out how, how am I going to go about doing this. There's a couple things that uh, maybe will get you started and get you going a little bit faster. I'd say the first thing is go ahead and get your instruments in place. You can see I have mine sort of laying here on the uh, inside the instrument already. Um, I happen to be using the types of needle drivers that are not locking, and so sometimes that's a little bit challenging as you're getting started to get these into the uh, into these simulator troll cars. Uh, anyway, so just make it easy on yourself. Start them off in place. The other thing that's uh, that. Uh, you may want to do is just go ahead and take your needle and hand feed it into the needle driver rather than trying to picking it, start picking it up and getting it in a proper position right off of the, uh, the base of whatever you're sewing on. Just take that out of the equation. What we're going to be working on at the beginning is getting that needle focused on whatever uh, tissue that I'm trying to sew on and properly getting that wrist turned to, to turn the needle. So just like you would be sewing if you were doing an open procedure or if you were doing straight stick laparoscopy, you're gonna hold the needle really the exact same way. So you're gonna grab the needle about two thirds up from the, uh, from the tip, just like that. Um, start the, the angle with which the needle comes off a needle driver from about 45 degrees to 90 degrees. You don't want it facing in towards you because that can bunch you up a little bit. So. Get a good grip on that needle. Now, even with the way you hold the needle, whether it's positioned, the nice thing with the wristed instruments is I can turn that needle out or I can turn that needle back in towards me to guide according to where I'm going to be sewing on whether it's uh, a bowel anastomosis or here on, on the simulator. Um, if you have the instruments that actually lock into place, Sometimes it's, it's nice to start out with those particular instruments so that you can get the needle exactly like you like it, lock the needle driver into place so that head doesn't turn, and just get used to these grips and the way the, uh, the needle driver itself turns. Maybe it's a little bit different from the straight sticks that you were using. Once you kind of get used to that, you'll find that it's much easier and more advantageous to take that locking mechanism off so you will have those those angles, which is why you're using these instruments in the first place. So uh, begin by addressing whatever you're going to sew and just practice getting that needle directly perpendicular to whatever you're sewing. And as I'm kind of going around this model here, you'll see I can turn my wrist in so the needle will stay perpendicular in whichever direction I'm going. And this is a nice little thing to do just as you're getting started without having to have the frustration of passing it through and trying to catch it with the other side. Just practice getting that needle perpendicular to your sewing at every single angle. Uh, the other thing that you would want to do is practice that with the other hand on the other side all the way around. Once you're comfortable with that, we want to start passing the needle through the tissue 
And just like you would be sewing intracorporeally, is you're focusing more on where that needle is coming out. Once you get it positioned correctly, your eyes go to where the needle's coming out so that when you make that wrist turn, you wanna see it coming out exactly where it's supposed to. Same as you would be doing otherwise. You're going to practice grabbing it with your other instrument, letting go, and continuing that turn to get the needle out. Now, that's enough to try for right now. Afterwards, we're gonna talk a little bit about passing the needle back and forth between hands, because that's another level that, uh, that you'll wanna to get to once you have reached that comfort zone and uh, in throwing your first couple of stitches. So as you're getting started, one of the really uh, helpful things with this particular design of simulator is that it's curved and I can use the instruments for what they're meant to be used for. I can practice not only sewing in between pieces of material, you know, in order to sew here and avoid this piece, I have to really practice kind of sliding in there. But as I'm coming up the simulator, I'm going to have to make little minor turns with my wrist in order to stay perpendicular to the tissue. So not only does that help me with uh, turning this wrist, wrist angle and getting used to all these wonderful little angles that I can get, but as I'm pushing the, the needle through the material, I want to really concentrate on not going too deep and diving in too far, but making sure that I'm grabbing the same amount of tissue on the front and the back side of the material. You can see I was using my non-sewing here and there to push some of that material out of the way and then pull this on through. So uh, really take advantage of, uh, of this design. You can even come on this side and you can push the needle out away from you, but there's all kinds of little tricks that you can do as you're working on this to come around. Um, I've even taken uh, my needle with a large amount of suture on it and run it all the way around and all the way back just to practice those angles. So take advantage of the, uh, of the tissue and make sure you're, you're getting used to turning that needle through with your wrist at several different angles. The other thing to practice uh, while you, you've got this simulator, one of the things that I found very uh, difficult, at least for me when I was first getting started, was uh, negotiating the needle between my two instruments. And it, there's some nuances to that now that you've got all these different angles that are turning on. Those angles can be helpful, but they also they can be a little bit frustrating as you're getting started. So as I'm coming to the tissue, I want to practice with my sewing hand here, getting equal amounts of tissue and going directly perpendicular to the material itself. I then want to concentrate on leaving that steady as I bring in my non-sewing hand to finish the move. And then I want to work on exactly how I'm going to represent that needle to my sewing hand. This is the part that took me a little getting used to because there's a couple things to keep in mind. This is a wristed instrument too. And I, there's ways that I can put this and present it to my sewing hand so it's easy for me to pick up or I can make it very difficult on myself uh, when I have it turned this angle. Not only can I not really see what I'm grasping, but it's a little bit harder to grasp. So make sure you're presenting it as you would with straight sticks, just how you want it. That way, as you're approaching, you can grab that needle exactly where you want to grab it there, maybe two thirds from the top, get yourself in position then to throw your next stitch. Obviously with uh, the material below me on this particular simulation model, I'm throwing all my stitches from a uh, pronated to a more supinated position here, just as we would normally do. But for those of you who've done a lot of intraportal suturing, especially using uh, uh, straight sticks where some of these other angles can be sort of frustrating. The nice thing about having a wristed instrument system is that I can change the way I grasp the needle just by grasping it in a more pronated position. I then have changed an angle so I can sew, if I'm working on a, on a ventral hernia case, I can sew in this direction. If I'm working on a ingual hernia, I can then sew in this direction to close the peritoneum just by uh, changing my presentation of the needle. Uh, then if I wanna go back, certainly I can just rechange my presentation. So. Uh, as you'll notice, these, these needle drivers are constructed in a, in a position such that they open and close horizontally as opposed to what we're normally used to, which is a vertical orientation. I thought that this would propose some challenges earlier, and I've really noticed that it's somewhat of an advantage and it actually works very well as I'm, as I'm sewing to do my cases. 
One of the uh, really interesting things that uh, you'll see with this particular system is that these needle drivers open in a horizontal plane as opposed to the needle drivers that you may be used to on the regular straight stick laparoscopic instruments that open in a, in a vertical plane like this. Uh, this was a, sort of a curiosity to me. I, I wondered why it was designed this way and before I actually began sewing, uh, my assumption was that it would pose a problem because uh, I was so used to sewing with instruments that were oriented in a, in, a, in a vertical plane like this. But as you can see, I'm holding the instrument uh, as it's meant to be held. Uh, the needle grass there in that horizontal plane and it really does put it in a perfect position. My hand right now is neutral, so it's very comfortable. I then turn it to a slight supinated position and I'm in a great position to come in and grab it with the other side. So rather than uh, creating a problem, it really is a very natural position with the design of these needle drivers and actually uh, not only doesn't pose a problem, I find it very easy to suture uh, with, the, with the grasper in this direction.